We are in the car on the way down to Birmingham Airport. I'm here with my lovely wife, Rach. Say hi. Hi. And today we are going to be showing something a little different. Now, loads of you have asked us to try and feature something around the lines of accessibility and how people with disabilities go about flying. Well, we have the perfect candidate here to try them out because my wife, Rach, suffers from fibromyalgia, which is a condition that causes a lot of pain, especially when she's done a lot of walking around airports and stuff like that. So we do tend to use the assistance services quite a lot when we fly, although you probably don't see them that much in the videos that I make because we don't tend to make much of a fuss about it. But today we're going to be trying out two airlines and to show you guys what it's like to fly with a disability. A, for those people who have disabilities and potentially want to see how everything works when you fly through an airport needing assistance but also for those of you who don't have a disability but might be curious about what happens to those who do so we're going to be showing you a little bit about how that all works and trying out EasyJet and Flybee today as we head from Birmingham Airport across to Belfast and back. For a short trip from Birmingham Airport, you're usually much better off parking at the railway station next door than at the airport. The price for 24 hours is just £12 versus the £41 the airport wants to charge for the same period in the short stay car park, or £37 in the mid stay which is a 10 minute walk away. It's connected to the terminal building with a monorail that takes just a couple of minutes to take you right into the terminal. Booking assistance with EasyJet was really simple. You just ticked a box when booking and the assistance was booked. Please hold on. We are stopping. First stop is to the assistance desk, um, which here at Birmingham is located downstairs. Um, it will probably be better. Okay. Do you have difficulty with the steps to the aircraft? Just take a seat for I'll get some to take it shortly. Thank you. Pretty soon the assistants turned up and we were whisked straight through fast track security to the departure lounge. Thanks. Wheelchair passengers get pushed through the gate at the side of the checkpoint and search manually. Alright, so here we are then at the assistance bit. Airside here at. What are you laughing at? Airside here at Birmingham. So they were pretty quick getting to us through the other side and coming to bring us straight through, whisked us through the fast track security to airside here and we've got to wait now a little bit for them to come and pick up Rach and take her to the plane. Usually if we're going up by steps then they have an ambulift that brings Rach out to the plane and loads her on like cargo at the front of the plane. Like cargo, <laughs> thanks! <laughs> About half an hour before the flight, another wheelchair arrived to whisk us down to the gate. <laughs> Unfortunately, the lift was out of order today, which meant going the long way round to get down to the gate. to an empty gate because we have an ambulift today um, up to the plane. The aircraft is using an air bridge but it's got steps down from the end of the air bridge and up to the plane which doesn't help does it? Yeah. <laughs> so while we wait for that we just hear in an empty gate area. Uh, the poor guy ended up having to walk extra because the lift he tried to take me to was broken. Not so, helpful. Um, not helpful at all. I'm here, so I'm excited to get on the plane. Can you get your coffee? 
I have got my coffee, so I'm feeling half human now. The world is a better place. <laughs> <laughs> the world did soon become an even better place as our aircraft landed after its flight inbound from Belfast. Before long, the assistance guy came back and took us out to the aircraft. <laughs> We were being boarded by an ambulift today. These are used on larger aircraft when there's no jet bridge and lift the passengers up to the door of the aircraft. Unfortunately, our seats today were right at the back of the aircraft and the ambulift boards from the front, which meant that we had to go against the flow of passengers boarding from the back doors. This made it pretty difficult for Rach, who had to stand for long periods of time while the passengers at the back boarded. Seats at the front are more expensive to book, which seems a little discriminatory to those with disabilities who have to either pay up or face a long walk to the back of the plane. Right, so on board, that was a hassle. They loaded us on at the front, but the seats on the um, on EasyJet are right down at the back. So, of course, they're loading passengers on from the back at the same time. So that was a bit of chaos, wasn't it? Always happens. Always happens. Um, so we're ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, a special welcome to our EasyJet Plus card holders. Pull a mask towards you to start the oxygen. We were soon on our way out to runway 33 and waved goodbye to the beautiful autumn morning. So we're settling into the flight, we've got coffee, bacon rolls are on the way, breakfast much needed this morning, um, so yeah, seats are a bit cramped. Um, it, it, I, I feel like I'm sitting on your knee, so... Oh, that's okay, hey. you can sit on my knee any time, hey. it's fine. Very good, thank you. For an aeroplane one at least. We got some great views of the Isle of Man as we crossed the Irish Sea and soon started our approach and landing into a cloudy Belfast International. Landed. This is the bit where we have to stay behind and wait while everybody else gets off the plane because we have to wait for the assistance to come sometime if it, if it comes at all. So we just have to sit still and wait. 
Right, ambulift lift is just turned up outside, so everyone's pretty much off the plane, We're just waiting for everybody to continue getting off and then we can go and get on the ambulift. lift. <laughs> Thank you. Can you do the No, lift please, thank you. How are you gonna go first? Yeah. Do you want me to shuffle on first? Yes. Is that right? Have a nice Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. See you again. Thank you. Okay, so we're here then in Belfast, Northern Ireland. How did you find that, Rach? The flight was okay. It was pretty short. Um, I did feel like I was sat on your knee for some of it. But apart from that, it was really good. The uh, Ambulift uh, put me on and the Ambulift took me back off the other end. So I can't fault them for that. That was, that was really good. You were pretty quick compared to normal as well. Usually you end up sitting around for ages waiting for um, waiting for them to come and get you off the plane and put you on the ambi lift and just you get forgotten about a lot of the time so that wasn't too bad so thumbs up to EasyJet and OCS who were doing the um, assistance at both Birmingham and here in Belfast. We're up off to um, Belfast City Airport now here in Northern Ireland which is about half an hour away and it was actually cheaper to rent a car to drive the short distance across there than it was to get an Uber or something so we're going to take a little plot across um, through the city of Belfast down to George Best Airport. It's about a 30 minute drive from Belfast International to Belfast City and we took a ride through some of the parts of the city that were most affected by the troubles of just a few years ago. Last time I came down here on this road, I was on a bus being bussed up from Waterford right the way up to Belfast when Fly Maybe cancelled my flight and figured that rather than send me back to Birmingham from Dublin, they'd drive six and a half hours up to Belfast. So we're back here at um, Belfast City Airport and Noel is incredibly dangerous with his hijacked wheelchair. Um, we're going to go and try and find the assistance desk. Managed to make it in without crashing too many times. How dangerous <laughs> you are. I'm lethal, but um, looks like we're ready to go. Oh, thank you. Once again, we were whisked straight through the fast track to the departure lounge. Watch your feet, there we go, through there, there we go, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to show you some nice Lovely, thank you. No problem, we're looking at these are about 30 minutes before your departure came. Okay? Alright, no worries, thank you. Flybee's assistant is booked in a similar way to EasyJet. It's great that passengers needing assistance are given free seat reservations on Flybee, meaning that a passenger needing assistance can be certain of sitting with their carer without having to pay for the seat allocation. Thanks very much. Alright, thank you. This is the most frustrating thing about this, isn't it? Is that when you've got assistance, you just kind of get dumped anywhere and we're kind of in the middle of nowhere 
Um, it's all right for us because there's two of us and I can run and get drinks and coffees and things and wheel you to the bathroom if you need yeah. it. But if you're if, on your own... If you're solo, it is incredibly difficult unless you get somebody who's really understanding. So uh, today I'm lucky that obviously Noel's with me and he can you know, nip me to the toilet or, you know, to, to go and get a drink or something for me. But yeah, it is something to bear in mind if you're travelling so low. You can feel a bit stranded, I guess. You can also feel kind of isolated because mm. although there's other people here, they're also in the same boat and nobody seems to talk to each other. Yeah, it's a bit of a struggle. But fortunately, we're both here today, so I can nip to the shop and get coffees and things and stuff like that and wheel you around. But um, And I just sit and go... Go get me that. That's fine. We have Starbucks. We're good. <laughs> Fortunately, the accessible point at Belfast is right next to Starbucks, which is very handy for somebody with a caffeine addiction like myself. So. We are still waiting for the flight. You are shattered, exhausted. Plug in first. Um, about another half an hour until the flight leaves, so we um, can get back and you can get some rest and see how long you're out of action for. Don't get me wrong, I'm grateful that you brought me away. <laughs> um, and I know I've not done a great deal today, but unfortunately when the fibro kicks my behind, it really knocks me and it's caught up with me. But it's a hidden disability and this is the trouble. People might see rage and think, oh, nothing. Nothing wrong with her or anything because she looks alright, she's not sat in a wheelchair there or anything, but this is exactly the problems that we have. So. Our aircraft soon arrived and we were whisked down to the gate. That's okay, I think the plane's only just landed, so. Unfortunately today there was no ambulift for us onto the Dash 8. They said we could have one if we really needed it, but there were only a handful of steps onto the Dash 8 and our concern was that we'd either end up holding up other passengers or having to fight our way through the aircraft like we did on EasyJet. As soon as the aircraft was ready to board, we were taken out of the steps in the weather that had taken a significant turn for the worse. Take that, yeah, I've got that, don't worry. Alright, thank you very much, thank you for your help, cheers. Hello there, how are you? Hi. Yes, thank you, we're 20, so. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Alright, right. so on board, and not brilliant, because so you didn't want to send an ambulift, so. Um, there's only a few steps, but you still struggled a little bit with the steps, didn't you? Um, and to be fair, I wasn't the only one. There, were all, uh, there was another disabled passenger as well, so... <laughs> and they just didn't send an ambulance lift, so we had to walk from the chair to the up the steps onto the plane, which is a bit of an issue. But never mind. The weather at Belfast really was dreadful today, and there was a lot of flooding on the taxiways and runway. Once we entered the cloud, we didn't leave it again until final approach at Birmingham.
here then at a rainy Birmingham. Just waiting for the other people to get off and then we can hopefully get our assistants back into the terminal. After we landed in Birmingham, we had to wait a while for the assistants to turn off. <laughs> Again, we had to use the steps to get off the aircraft as there was no ambulance sent. The assistants took us through to the arrivals hall and from there we were able to use the wheelchair to get back to the station car park. Okay, so we are back here in England after our little trip over to Northern Ireland and back with EasyJet and Flybe. Um, Flybe weren't quite as good with the assistance thing as EasyJet. I think with Flybe you were made to feel more like um, you were in the way sort of thing and um, with the Ambulift for example they never brought an Ambulift to us over in Belfast and they didn't get bring one over to the plane either. They said oh well we could have one if we really really wanted one and my impression of that was that yeah maybe if we'd have pushed we could have got it but they weren't that happy to do it and we felt like I guess like you feel a lot of the time really that you're in the way and that you're going to cause problems and also the other thing is if we had have waited for the ambulance yeah maybe if we'd have pushed for it we could have got it but if we had have waited for the ambulance then when we got to the plane everybody else would have been on board and we'd have really struggled in terms of getting down the aisle just like we did with EasyJet on the way over. <laughs> the, the flight with EasyJet was quite good, um, the one with Flybe is more in line with uh, my expectations um, incredibly difficult and you literally are made to feel like you're causing issues you're causing problems it's not the easiest thing in the world to actually push and say well no i do need the help really you can't do this you couldn't do what i do and fly back-to-back -back flights if you were a disabled passenger um because of the time constraints and things involved and from my point of view, I think that really puts um, disabled people at a bit of a disadvantage there straight away. Um, let us know what you think to this down in the comments below. Have you had to travel with a disability perhaps? Um, or have to travel with somebody with a disability? And how have you found the assistance more importantly? But in the meantime, thank you for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time here on InFlight Video.